In the last episode we set up October and we get uh, got our API going. So it's this one right here. So in this episode we are going to set up the view side of things and we are going to connect to that API just to see if everything works. And then in the next episode we can get to real work. So first of all, let's check out what version of Vue CLI do we have installed on our system, if any. So if you do something like Vue version, then you would get the version of the Vue CLI that you are using. I'm currently using 3.0.4, uh, but if you are using anything below that or below 3.0, uh, then you should install a new version. If you don't have uh, Vue CLI at all installed on your system, then you can just do something like a sudo npm install dash g view cli but if you already have it uh, then before running this command uh, you would run a sudo npm uninstall dash g view dash cli so you would run that command first and then install view cli again and then you should get the newest version of view cli Okay, so now that you got that out of the way, let's create uh, our view application. So we are in view rent a car uh, directory. Uh, if we ls it, you can see that we have an API. This is our October installation. And now we need to install our app or create our app. We are going to call it app actually. So to do that, you just do view create app or whatever you want to call uh, your view application. You can maybe call it app rent a car or view rent a car or whatever. But I'm just going to call it app. And now view is going to ask us some questions uh, and we are not going to use, be using the default setup, but we are going to manually select our features. So we want uh, to select Babel, of course. Uh, then we want to have a linter. Uh, we want to have CSS preprocessor. Uh, we want to have Vuex, which we are going to be using in this episode, in this series. And then we have a router. Okay, press enter. Uh, use history mode. Yes, you will see what that is used for. And then you need to pick a CSS preprocessor. In our case, it's going to be a CSS CSS. And then I'm just going to use the standard configuration for ESLint. Although uh, for optional uh, step in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install bubble lint, which is a linter uh, that uh, I use in my company. So it's just easier for me, but you can step that, uh, you can skip that step if you don't want to have any linter or whatever, or you maybe want to use Airbnb's uh, linter. So I'm just going to use standard uh, lint on save no. Uh, actually linked on save yes and uh, where do we want to prefer uh, where do we want to place uh, configurations for babel post css s lint and so on so i'm just going to set it to be in dedicated config files not in package json and uh, do you want to save this preset no okay so now view is going to install okay so now that the view is installed uh, we need to cd into app and then run npm run serve. Okay, so now our, app, our application is running at localhost 8080. So I'm just going to copy it right here. And as you can see, this is our view app application. Uh, now uh, I'm just going to make a, an additional step which is optional and install a uh, bubble lint. So this is a linter that we use in the company I work for. So I'm just going to install bubble lint by using npm install slint config bubble lint. So this is just a configuration file for slint that we use at our company. Uh, I'm just kind of used to it, so that's why I'm uh, using it right here, but you can skip this step altogether. So now in our code editor, instead of uh, this view standard extend, uh, we will use uh, bubble lint and uh, you can find this file in app, then slintrc.js. So I'm just going to set this to be slint 
Esslent config bubble int and that's about it. So now uh, PHP Storm is going to use that bubble int and also when we save uh, and uh, the webpack recompiles our files, it's going to watch our code and uh, display any errors or warnings that are in our code according to this bubble int linter. So now we are just going to run npm run server again and see if everything works. And we get a compile error right here because we are using semicolon uh, here and the bubble int uh, doesn't support the usage of semicolons in our JavaScript code. So we have to fix that to let the application recompile. So now I'm just going to delete this semicolon from the main.js file right here. So delete that, save it. And now, as you can see, uh, the webpack continued uh, to compile our application. We have some warnings right here, but we are not going to uh, look at them. The, uh, the compilation will work just fine. These are just warnings on how you should write your code. So let's check out our site if it works. Okay, so our site works. And as you can see, we have these uh, links home and about so we are currently on a home page if you click on about uh, this is our router in the works so we have two pages or two routes as you can see about and this is home uh, so we are just going to delete all of this and uh, just test out if we can connect to our api so i'm going to go to home that view uh, home that view Let's set this be a bit better. And we are not going to be importing this hello world. Uh, so hello world uh, is the home page. So I'm just going to delete that. Also, uh, we don't need these components. And also we don't need a name. Actually, we need a name, okay? So let's fix, fix this. Uh, we don't need hello world. So I'm just going to delete that and uh, we can also delete this logo right here. So we have an empty home page. And we have an empty home page, and but we still have these links home and about uh, because our router still works and it's actually in view uh, in, in app.view file. So as you can see, our menu is right here. Let me make this better. And uh, Okay, so fix slin file and now we can see this home and about. Okay, so now we have uh, our home page and in that home page we, uh, we are going to test out if uh, connection to our API works. So first of all, I'm going to install. So I'm just going to open up a new tab in my console and go to let me make this a bit smaller and go to view rent a car cd app and right here i'm going to in npm install axios so we are going to be using axios uh, to connect to our server to our A api server we already did this in a couple of videos before so this should be nothing new to you okay now we can import it right here. So import Axios from Axios. Oh, come on. Okay. Import Axios from Axios. And then we are going to uh, define a new method right here. Mount it. And uh, let's just, uh, for example, create. Uh, hello world console log just to see if this works and I of course misspelled Axios Okay Now this is better save this and we can check out if this works So if I open up my console right here, I get this hello world Let me Just refresh this. Okay, so we don't get any errors nothing like that uh, right, let's get back uh, right here and in this mounted method instead of uh, using console log, we are going to get the response from our API. 
So to do that, you would just do Axios get, and then you add an URL, HTTP. In our case, it's going to be API. You rent a car localhost, and then we want to get a response. And we just want to uh, cons log that response out. Save this. You, now, if we go to Chrome, uh, you can see this. So, failed to load, no access control allow origin. Now, this is a problem with view we don't have cores installed so we go, we are going to have to go to october and install cores right there and then see if our application works so i just seen that this should actually beat vehicles vehicles but uh, the problem is going to remain uh, it doesn't matter so uh, this is our vehicles route but we still get this uh, course problem so we are going to go to october go to settings plugins updates and plugins and install a new plugin called course okay set this up now we go to course settings and uh, add allowed origins so we are going to set it to be asterisk asterisk or everything so save this and now we are going to set allowed methods which is going to be get uh, and uh, maybe another one post put and delete so we are going to be needing those methods throughout this series uh, and i'm just going to save this and let's check out our application now so as you can see, we are getting the data from our server. If I click right here, let me make this bigger. So as you can see, we get this object, this data object. Uh, and to just see our data from the API, we can just do console log response data. Okay. Now, as you can see, we get this. Let me refresh this page. So we would get just this. And as you can see, this is uh, vehicle one, uh, this is vehicle two, and so on. So as you can see, we are getting the uh, information from our API. Now we are ready to actually start developing this application and we are going to start doing that in the next episode. So remember everything we did here will, will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.